I want to welcome, on behalf of Unity, the Great Plains region to this Zoom call. And I would like to introduce to all of you the Great Plains region youth representative. His name is Justice Fox. He comes from the Sioux tribes, the Rikara, Adatsa, and what's the other one? Um, Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara. There you go. Okay. <laughs> well, just go here, Justice. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, Justice Fox. My name is Justice Fox, and I'm the Great Plains Regional Representative. All the agenda, Justice. Hello? Yes. Okay, I was making sure you can hear me. And so to start off, uh, would anyone want to uh, do the prayer? Anyone want to volunteer? Uh, <laughs> I think, I think if, wait, did they have to be a volunteer? I can volunteer. All right. All right. Creator, I just want to thank you for gathering us here today. Um, I want to thank you for letting us have this time and this space to you know, talk about the Native youth and all of our Native communities. Bless all of those that are on the call today and all of those that who could not be on the call today. I want you to open up our minds and our hearts so that, you know, good things can come out of this meeting and that we can further help our Native communities and keep all of those that are near and dear to us in your prayers as well. Keep them safe and happy. All right, thank you, Audrey. And now on to check in with the Great Plains with the introduction. So let's, who do I, who do I start? Do I just start with anyone or just? Representative Fox, just go down the uh, names and have them introduce themselves, their tribes, if they're in school, what youth councils they represent. All right, so the first person I see is Audrey. Would you like to introduce yourself? Audrey <laughs> Mitchell Hello, everybody. My name is Audrey Mitchell. I am Navajo and Southern Cheyenne, and I'm an enrolled member of the Colorado River Indian Tribes. And I currently reside in Mesa, Arizona. And I'm also serving on the EC as the female co president. And I'm very happy to be on the call today. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. And now, uh, next person is Ariana. You could introduce yourself. Ariana, are you, are you there? All right. <laughs> Anything else? So just, just, just your name is Ariana. All right, that's cool. Let's okay. go down the list. All right, next person, uh, Chloe Barristow. Uh, Chloe, yeah. Um, 
My name is Claire Bairstow. I'm from the Madan Hidatsa and Urkara tribe, and I'm enrolled there. <laughs> Welcome, Chloe. <clears throat> so I just put in the chat, you know, um, what you could say for your introduction. Uh, next person, <clears throat> Donna Ritchie. Hello, Donna Ritchie. If you didn't introduce yourself. Uh, next person, uh, Hala P. S. Hi, my name is Hala. I'm Cherokee, and I am from Anadarko, Oklahoma, and I am from Communities and Schools. Cool, cool. Thank you. Uh, next person, Jesse Bell. I'm Jesse Bell, and um, I'm with the three affiliated tribes. And I think it's the MHA Youth Group. That's our thing. All right, thank you. Next, Riley Escobar. Um, my name is Riley Escobar. Um, I'm from the MHA tribe I'm from Whitefield, North Dakota, and I'm from the MHA Youth Group Council. Welcome, Riley. You're welcome. Uh, next person, Sandra. Sandra. <clears throat> All right. Um, next person, Sean. Uh, hi, I'm Sean Stranger Horse. I'm from the MSA tribe. Hi. And next person, Steve Harvey. Hi guys, what's up? My name is Steve Harvey. I'm 20 years old. I'm the Western Region Representative and I am here in support of the Great Plains um, Representative Justice. Thank you, thank you. Oh, there's another person. Image, if you could introduce yourself. My name is Image. I'm here for justice. Uh, All right. <laughs> Welcome. And I think that's everyone. Oh. Yeah. I was like, I was thinking of, um, Icebreakers, but I couldn't like find one for virtual because it's kind of tough. So, would, would, uh, would anyone <clears throat> like Audrey or C, would you guys know an icebreaker virtually?
Um, <laughs> we can do Never Have I Ever. Um, it's basically um, five fingers up. Um, you basically say anything like Never Have I Ever did this. If you've done it, then you put a finger down and then it goes like that. Um, it shouldn't take up too long. And then I also did um, How Much Does a Polar Bear Weigh? That one actually works in my, <laughs> <laughs> in my regional meetup. Yeah, so do do any of you guys know how uh, how much a polar bear weighs? Enough, Enough to break, break the ice. <laughs> yeah, it's not, and that's it. You know, my name's Justice. You know, this is the meetup. But uh, do you think we, uh, Greg? Do you think we have time to do that? Never have I ever. Or. What was that gig? I can't, I can't hear you. Just meeting George and those folks are on the call and leave it up to you, sir. All right. Um, how would that work? Would, would we have to have our cameras on? Or would it just be like the hand thing and the reaction? Um, yeah, you would have to turn your cameras on and then they would like put up their hands. Kind of like never have, um, never have I ever. I don't know if you've seen it done, but yeah, uh, it's super yeah, easy. It's super like, yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if you want to put the cameras on. So um, it's kind of a tough one. I think. I think. I think I, I think I broke the ice, you know, with the polar bear one. That's a, that's a good one, you know, but. I seem to, and I think everyone knows each other except for <clears throat> Sandra, uh, Donna, and Taylor. These are people from that that like came in the meeting that I don't know, and uh, I don't think anyone else knows. So, uh, I think. I think we should move on to E. Yeah. No. Move on to the next uh, item on the agenda, Mr. Uh, Representative Fox. And this next item on the agenda, all those that are on the call, we understand that community and some people have endured for the last two years, especially with this pandemic. A lot of our tribal communities, our schools, our families, and we want to hear from the young people on the call. Uh, how are you doing? Any updates about what's happening within your own tribal community? We want to hear how we can help you as a community. And this is the very reason why we are having this meetup that we can. Uh, Hear your concerns or any ideas to help uh, continue uh, your involvement with unity. We understand some tribes have placed travel restrictions for youth councils or even schools to travel. So we just want to know how uh, you're doing. Uh, again, a lot of our young people have gone through a lot during the last two years, and we just want to hear from you. This is an opportunity for you to interact with your representative, Justice Fox, who represents the Great Plains region. For some who may not know, we are getting ready for the National Unity Conference in July in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So again, we are hoping to have a full conference during that uh, conference in July. So again, we just want to hear your thoughts your ideas, your concerns, if any. With that, uh, I'll just let Representative Fox take the dialogue. Okay. Uh, so, um, so I can like, you want me to do the updates or do you want me to ask what's it, someone about their youth council or like their region or like their youth He's gonna do it. I know, but you can sit here, watch, and listen. Well, I'm just listening. 
committee. Well, we need to put in the chat. It's me, Elijah. Really? The executive committee is on the call to share their thoughts so that we can get the conversation going. All right, I think I heard you. Uh, Elijah, your, your mic's on. Your mic's nice. on. I thought I had mute. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, could you repeat some of that, but, uh, Greg, you wanted uh, us to start the conversation? Yeah, you, you can start off the dialogue to open discussion, and then one of your executive committee members share their thoughts about what's happening within the community, the things that they're doing during this time period, whether it be in person or virtually, anything that they're doing. All right, well, <laughs> I'll start within uh, my community. Um, uh, it's, uh, we have events coming up soon that will, um, that uh, Unity, or uh, yeah, our, like Unity, like our, youth, our youth council will be a part of, um, which is, um, uh, they wanna set up a cedar tree in front of our school. And, a cedar, and the cedar tree is like, um, a very important like symbol in our culture and like in our tribe, and so that that'll be pretty cool, you know, to um, be there and witness that. And then um, another is um, uh, oh, we're going to um, visit our elders and uh, make ribbon shirts and and ribbon skirts, and just like. Um, uh, what's that called a visit with our elders like at the at our elder um what's it our elder at our elders building so then uh it'll like sort of bridge the gap between you know like the youth and our elders and that's what's that's the, those are just two events that are coming up or like that are happening in like this time period in my community um Anyone else would like to, you know, uh, talk about what's happening in there? Like, like Taylor, Hala uh, said they're from Anadarko, which is in Oklahoma. So, you know, I, I don't know what's like in Oklahoma. Well, um, I'm Elijah Landon. I'm from uh, Minot, North Dakota. Um, recently, there was a Native American um, Native American club at a local elementary school, and uh, it's their first time trying to get uh, like their Native students together. And uh, I went and helped uh, participate in some of their events. It's pretty interesting. They uh, they made fry bread, they made Indian tacos, and then uh, another time they played hand games. Um, uh, it was just, uh, they were getting their elementary Native American students together to learn about their culture. And uh, I thought that was something interesting that, that was going on in the community. That's nice. Pretty cool, pretty cool. <clears throat> um, if anyone else would like to share what's happening in uh, the community. Uh, I can share cool. really quick. Thank you. Um, down in the Western region, we have a lot of youth councils. Uh, mostly the tribal youth councils are still inactive, but the ones near uh, or in the Phoenix area, like the school youth councils are, um, you know, becoming more active uh, because school is in session in person and they've been starting to do more in-person um, activities and community events and volunteering. So it's good to see that 
you know, that they're getting back up on their feet after, you know, uh, the couple of years that they've had being apart. But um, hopefully that, uh, you know, more of the tribal youth councils will follow suit once the tribal restrictions lift. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at at, at the moment. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, for uh, just just so like you guys know, like um, Chloe and like Image and Jesse and Riley and Sean, we're all part of the same youth council group. So you know we all have like the same community. We're all doing the same thing. Except for Elijah, Elijah's in uh, a different town. But uh, where he lives, there's like, where he said like they have those like little, um, like he said that the elementary school wanted to get their kids together, uh, other native students together. Um, they're like, they're like, uh, they're like a youth council, but they're like not like registered and stuff, but there's like a junior youth council because they're not old enough to be in unity. But that like, that you see like that little like group is pretty cool. But Donna Richie, I have no idea, you know, where they're from or their community. I can also talk about um, what's going on in my local youth council and then um, just branch off about what my region's doing in their youth councils. So in my local youth council, we're barely getting things rolling again. Um, we are planning to go to Unity. Um, we do plan on doing a couple of community cleanups as well as fundraising um, before Unity. Um, however, within my region as a whole, there's youth councils that are like already up and running and doing so many good things. Um, one that I saw was um, a color run. Somebody did that. Another one, they just inaugurated their um, new officers for the year and the other ones they're doing um, virtual like meetups as well as um, virtual like shows, our little podcasts that they're doing. And it's really um, nice to see that going on within the Western region, so. Okay. That's, pretty, that's pretty cool, Uh, Greg, I can't uh, hear you. Like your mic's a little uh, messed up. It's still like cutting in and cutting out. It's like uh, it's like if it's it's like it's muffled or something. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Um, again, uh, Representative Foster and those from the MHK Nation. Much
Uh, to be honest, guy, I I try to hear you, but it's like a static noise is like right there, and I I tried to get most of it, and I think it's like uh. All right. Uh. Well. I, I don't think we have any <clears throat> more youth regional updates. So if we could just move on to item F. Greg, I think you need to mute yourself. Sorry. Alright, so if we move on to item F since we don't have any more youth regional updates. Uh, do I talk about restoring the spirit of Native Youth Resolution? I can touch up on that. All right, so um, the restoring the spirit of the Native Youth Resolution is um, this year's EC's initiative that we wanted to focus on. And we came up with this uh, idea of restoring the spirit of Native youth within our first six months of our um, seats being on the executive committee. And we really talked about what we wanted to do this year. And one of the things that we were mainly focused on was, you know, bringing back all of the youth councils and all of the, um, Native youth who have been impacted by COVID-19. As you know, a lot of youth councils and communities have um, kind of gone inactive. Maybe even your own youth council has been impacted by this as well. And youth councils are starting up again. And we're just trying to uh, relight that fire within our Native communities and, you know, show Native youth that even though we have been impacted, you know, very personal, personally throughout the past couple of years, it is, you know, up to us to kind of restart that, um, that fire that we had before of bringing our communities together, being there for them, you know, providing whatever they may need. And um, that's kind of what we wanted to do as an executive committee was let the Native youth know that we are here for them, we do understand, because even us, uh, we've seen it throughout our own communities, how COVID has impacted our own youth councils and our communities. And so we brought out this resolution during our uh, mid-year business meeting, during the mid-year conference in February, and it was passed um, at the National Unity Council business meeting. And now is kind of our rollout through these next couple of months leading up to the National Unity Conference in July. And we had um, an idea to bring about talking circles, healing circles, and also town hall meetings um, to kind of encourage the youth to come together again and bring back um, all of their community and community projects and volunteering and stuff like that. So we had actually our first town hall healing circle this past month in April, where we rolled out this initiative and we'll be having one of these every single month. And so I believe next month, um, I believe Steve is gonna be on that. Steve, do you remember what day that is next month? May 18th, May 18th. Oh my gosh, May 18th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the first uh, town hall or healing circle that we did uh, was with myself, our other male co-president, um, our secretary and our vice president. And we have our other executive committee representatives that are going to be on all of these uh, healing circle town hall meetings. Um, throughout the next couple of months leading up to the national conference. So if you weren't able to make it to the last one, I encourage you to make it to next month or even the month after that. Um, spread the word because, you know, this is something that we would like to get out to all of the regions and all of the youth councils, um, if possible. 
But yeah, and I don't know, Greg, if you wanted to talk about the website. Uh, a little bit be uh, better than what it was before. Um, does anyone have a question about the page? Still kind of hard to hear you, uh, Greg. All right, and then so, what was the what was the question you asked, or what was? I don't know. I don't, does anyone have a question about the page? Like Chloe, Jesse, Riley, Sean, Elijah? If not, then we can go on to the next item, right? Which is oh, it'd be closing, right? We, we talked about the Spirit Town Hall meeting and then
So I would be closing and then it would just be our uh, announcements. Greg, I think you need to mute yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> so do I do I announce the announcement? The Healing Our Mother Earth on Earth Day webinar, which has been a two days, less than three days. And that's the um, Earth Ambassadors. To so see if you, you could talk about that just for a little bit me or steve, uh, steve you know. i can yeah. yeah i can talk about it <laughs> um the healing our the healing the spirit of mother earth webinar will be held on friday the 22nd at 6 p.m mountain standard time um you can also register um at the unity website or you can also go to my instagram page at steve harvey and um click the link in my story and you can also register there. It's going to be a really fun um, webinar. It's hosted by Native Youth and um, it's a lot of fun. Come hang out with us. You won't regret it. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Greg, we can hear all of your clicking. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, Greg. It's all good, Greg. Greg, you need a new laptop. <laughs> I'm going to find you a new laptop. <laughs> <For real>. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like this for so long. <laughs> it's like the past three. <laughs> yeah this is um the restoring the spirit town hall meetings that i was talking about earlier the next one is going to be may 18th and that's going to have um steve harvey who is on the call also um elwood mcclellan he's the southern oh my gosh Plains, Southern, Southern Plains. Plains. Southern Plains Southern. representative. Yeah. Evan Richardson, she's the Southeast representative, and Shinoa Scipio, who is the Southwest representative. And I'm pretty sure that'll be a fun call. And they're also going to, um, you know, lead you guys through some different activities involving asset mapping and, um, you know, talking circles and healing circles. So I highly encourage you guys to join any of the meetings. If not this one, we have another one in June coming up as well. All right, thank you. And then the next one, right, would be, the next answer would be, oh wait, that, that was the next answer on the Spirit Hall for May 18th. And then the third one for June 15th. And then our last announcement would be national the, the National Unity Conference on July 7th to 12th. I was wondering, Greg, why, I, I don't know if I want to ask Greg, because Greg doesn't, you know, doesn't have a mic right now, but Audrey, how come, what's it, our, uh, the, the Unity Conference is like shorter this year than it was last year? Um, what are the dates? Is the 8th through the 12th or? Yeah, it's like, yeah, 7th to 12th or 8th to 12th. That's, I thought it was longer. 
that's five days. It's usually five days. So it starts. Oh, on I like, thought it was like a week. Oh, yeah, I thought it was like a whole week. The conference is usually three full days and two half days. Oh, I see. yeah, yeah. Because we do two half days to give people room for traveling. So yeah. So, yeah I, I guess it just felt longer, you know, last year. <laughs> I was like, I was like, dang, we've been here for a whole week. Well, you guys might have came earlier because we do have pre-conference activities, just as Greg pulled up on the screen for you guys. This is our draft agenda for the National Unity Conference in 2022, happening in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, the pre-conference activities include um, the communications boot camp and youth leaders training. And those are mainly for, you know, the EC and all of the other um, unity cohorts, but anybody who is willing to sign up for the community, the communications bootcamp is also welcome to join. But the real conference starts on that Friday, July 8th, and it starts later in the day. Um, well, we have a bunch of stuff leading up to that, but we usually try to give people more time to come in for traveling. And then we start our opening ceremony at 2 p.m. And then we have all of those um, other things that we usually do, roll call, welcome remarks. All of the regions are gonna be there. Messages from our keynote speakers, pre presentations. And we also have um, our new cohort, the 25 under 25 that are going to be announced anytime now. So if any of you guys have applied for the 25 under 25 program, be looking out for Unity's posts on social media or on their website for that. And yeah, this is basically, it's kind of the same as um, most agendas are for the national conference, if you've ever been to one. Every day is full of different activities and every day also has a theme as well. And so we have a day for you to wear your traditional skirts or shirts, um, you know, just to represent your own tribe. We have a unity drum. If any of you guys are singers and are interested in being a part of that group, um, please let your representative know and then we can get in contact with you guys as well. We have different keynote speakers, which we are still um, looking for recommendations for. So if any of you guys know of anybody who you think would be a great keynote speaker or a presenter at the National Unity Conference who you would like to see, um, please let us know as well. You can uh, let Justice know or email um, the Unity office so that we may reach out to them as well. Oh, and we're also bringing back the three-on-three -three basketball tournament. So if you oh, yeah. guys didn't know, um, Unity used to have a three-on-three -three tournament every year, but because of COVID, we couldn't really do that um you know for the past couple of years but we're bringing it back so hopefully you guys are excited for that and can you know get together a little group because that's always fun and as usual we have a talent night we have the unity fire which burns out through the entire conference for any of those who need to go out to the fire or just want to hang out at the fire um, we have wellness warriors fitness activities Unity Drum general sessions. We also have exhibitors and vendors that will be attending as well. Like I said, we have different workshops that we usually do. And most importantly is the National Unity Council business meeting. So if you are an affiliated member of Unity or your youth council is and you are sending uh, representatives um, to attend this business meeting, please make sure that you have all of your uh, documentations turned in on time um, and also be on time for that business meeting because that is when we will be uh, voting for our next executive committee, committee for the next year. And then we have the Unity Gala and then also the Unity Dance usually on the last night as well. Or no, that's the second to last night. And then Monday we have some more activities, general sessions, workshops, 
presentation by the peer guide, which is another Unity cohort. We have orientation for the new executive committee. This is new, we just added that this past year because usually we have the Unity Gala on the last night, but we decided to have it on the second to last night so that the new executive committee can be, you know, put through orientation and training so that they can get to know each other better. We also have a culture night. So if your youth council is interested in signing up for that, we always encourage all youth councils from everywhere to try to sign up and, you know, do a traditional song or dance from your tribe or anything that you would like to showcase that night. And then the next day is just kind of a, a wrap up where we thank everybody for coming, um, have our last keynote speaker. Our friendship circle is kind of where we, you know, say goodbye um, for now and hopefully we get to see each other within the next year. And then that's also a travel day as well. And then the 2023 National Conference is going to be in Washington, D.C. Dang, D.C. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Audrey, for taking over there for, you know, a bit. Um, but that should be all the agenda, right? Yeah. All right. And so... We just close up the meeting by adjourn it, right? Or okay, so adjourn the meeting. Or well, well, okay, so I'd be like, would anyone want to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? What um, to make a motion to adjourn the meeting at what time is it? Seven fifty-two. Uh, what time is it? Uh, standard time. And anyone second? Ah. <laughs> well, what was your name? By the Escobar. Second to motion. And then everyone, all those who all agree, say aye. 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 And that should be good, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for coming to my meetup, especially, you know, the EC members like Evelyn, Shinoa, Steve, and Aji, and then the former representative, Elijah. I uh, will do that. <laughs> See ya. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Before you end it, um, I have a question. So when are the, when are when are they going to announce who the the twenty five and the twenty five? What? <gasps> Next week. So I probably didn't get picked then because I didn't receive no email, Nate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If literally, if I do lose, this is gonna be my fourth time losing. Yes. What did you say? Oh my gosh! Literally, I'm a manifest. I'm a manifest <laughs> so hard. Hey, Evelyn, how you doing? Okay. Okay, bye, Greg. Bye, Justice. All right, bye. Justice, good. Thank you for coming. Thank you for showing up, Evelyn. Or Evelyn. Oh, I see. Okay.